again, everybody, and welcome to the latest Bengals training camp report. It is brought to you by Medical Mutual, the official health insurer of the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm Dan Horde. The guy in the other box is Dave Lapham. We are seeing Joe Burrow in the middle of the screen. And Lap, let's start with, I guess, what would be the news of the day? And that would be the fact that A.J. Green, once again, did not practice today. However, he was doing some rehab stuff inside of Paul Brown Stadium. And while AJ is not expected to take part in the scrimmage tomorrow, I think he's going to be back soon. I agree with you, Dan. And uh, I, I think that Jack Taylor is exceptionally happy with what he saw from AJ Green in the first couple of workouts. Probably if AJ has to practice again before the opener, he'll probably start against the Chargers. But uh, it was encouraging to see the rehab work he was doing. He didn't look to be very limited at all in his movement. So um, it's precautionary, uh, but wise probably. And, you know, Dan, I think this first um, scrimmage is almost going to be like an early preseason game. I think quite a few veterans won't see much action. It's This this scrimmage will probably be evaluating the last 40 to positions, 40 to 53 on the 53-man roster. And then the next scrimmage that uh, that's going to take place August 30th, in Paul Brown Stadium in the evening. I think that's going to be like preseason game number three, where the veterans play a little bit and get ready for that season opener and then have a time to recover and, and get their bodies ready for that opener. But I, I think that'll that'll flow along as close to preseason and preseason games as you can get, I think. As we look at Joe Burrow, let's talk about his day. We can't show the full team drills because NFL teams and head coaches like Zach Taylor don't want to give up their formations and the various plays they're working on in training camp. But it was an interesting day for Joe Burrow when they started doing full team drills. On his first drop back, he got pressured by DJ Reader and had to scramble. On his first pass, he missed Mike Thomas wildly. On his fourth pass, he was intercepted by linebacker Josh Bynes. After that, three out of his next four passes were deep completions to Tyler Boyd, Mike Thomas, and C.J. Uzama. I had him for 15 for 19 overall in 11-on-11 drills. That's 79%. Six for nine in seven-on-seven drills, 67%. So after a slow start, it was a good day for Joe Burrow. Tells me a lot about him, Dan. Uh, it, it confirms that his game is about poise and not panic. Very easy for a, a rookie quarterback to have a start like that and then start to press and start to do things that he shouldn't do. And then what does he do? He stays poised, calm, goes back to the basics, goes back to his techniques, his fundamentals, his footwork, you know, hitting the spots, throwing the ball accurately, making quick decisions, throwing with the anticipation and accuracy, showed his game. The other thing that was interesting, uh, Josh Bynes mentioned in a, in a Zoom uh, press conference today that Joe Burrow went up to him after he threw the interception and said, what did you see? Why did you do what you did? And Josh Bynes said, no rookie quarterback's ever done that to him before, and he's a 10-year veteran. He's been to a few training camps. So that tells you something about Joe Burrow. He has an insatiable thirst for the game of football. He wants to be good. He wants to do things right. He wants to be coached. He wants to be corrected. He doesn't want to make the same mistake twice, whether it's a veteran player telling him, an assistant coach, the head coach, whoever it is. Joe Burrow wants to learn and wants to be great. They did red zone drills a couple of days ago, and it was an up and down day for Joe Burrow, to say the least. Much sharper today, including red zone touchdown passes to Auden Tate, Mike Thomas, and Alex Erickson. And, and the receivers you're talking about, you know, no A.J. Green, no, no Ross, uh, you know, no T. Higgins. Those are guys that everybody is thirsting for Joe Burrow to get some kind of a relationship, some kind of timing and rhythm with, and that's going to happen. But, again, not so hot red zone drill yesterday. How does he respond? No panic. He's about poise. Comes back and has a good, strong, solid red zone day. He said the first thing he's going to – after yesterday's red zone practice, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to see what happened why I played the way I played, I'm going to correct it, I'm going to come back and take care of business. And he did. Another good sign. And, you know, for a rookie quarterback, ask Peyton Manning, ask Troy Aikman, up and down, up and down. It's not going to be a, a smooth sailing, clear path, but you got to hope that you don't make the same mistake over and over and over again. You know, learn from it, uh, use it as a learning tool, and, and move on. 
We're moving to the defensive drills in the footage on the screen. But before we get to that, we just saw some footage of number 89, that second-year tight end, Drew Sample, who has really transformed his physique going into his second NFL season. No question, Dan. They're listening with 258, 258 on the, on the, uh, with, with his weight on the, on the roster sheet. He and uh, Sam Hubbard worked out in, in Drew Sample's garage. They had a, you know, a home-built gym in there. And they worked hard. And Sam Hubbard, we know he works hard. Everything he does, he works hard. So Drew Sample is working hard. And dividends, I mean, it paid off. You know, talked about uh, if you can have a tight end, a la Kittle, who can block, can set the edge for you in the running game, and be an accomplished receiver, run good routes, get open, be a reliable catch of the football, that'd be huge. And the way they ran the ball in the second half of the season, six best in the NFL, Joe Mixon averaged over 100 yards a game on the ground in the last eight games. You know, having that tight end, it, it Drew Sample and C.J. Uzama, if they both can set the edge in the running game and be uh, dual threats catching the football, that'd be a huge weapon to get, a huge weapon to have. And uh, Drew Sample, we talked about before year one to year two, it's normally a big growth. You didn't know what you didn't know year one. You start to know what you're supposed to know year two. And I think Drew Sample is going to have that kind of jump. And now we're looking at the rookie linebackers. Number 55 is Logan Wilson. Number 59, just uh, disappearing behind your box, is Akeem right. davis Gaither. Right. When they, At 56 is Josh Bynes, the veteran they signed as a free agent. When they came out to do the 11-on-11 stuff today, the two linebackers that were part of the starting unit were Josh Bynes. You would expect that. But Akeem davis Gaither was the other. Uh, Pratt, Jermaine Pratt, who in his second year was that guy the other day. It just goes to show you, Lap, I don't want to read too much into that because they are mixing and matching these young linebackers frequently. It's a wide open competition. Putting old with young, young with young. I mean, they're, they're mixing and matching is a great way to describe it, Dan. There's no question. Uh, but one thing I can say, all three of the drafted linebackers flash physically. I mean, they, they've got some quickness. They've got some burst. You know, they, they've got some suddenness to them. They all can run. Um, you know, Bynes obviously is at this stage of his career is relying more on his football IQ, taking the perfect angle. The rookies may not know the perfect angle yet, but physically they can make up for it. No wasted steps for the KG veteran. I mean, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's seen a lot of football, seen a lot of snaps. You know, he was referred to by Logan Wilson, Josh Bynes, as a walking football encyclopedia. That's, uh, that's pretty high praise, and he's imparting that knowledge to those young linebackers. The, the mix in the core of that linebacker group is interesting. Taking a look at A.J. Green here, probably frustrated watching uh, his offensive teammates work out. But uh, like we said earlier, Dan, it's not, he, he's, he's not in a situation where he's limping and gimping. It's, it's precautionary more than anything. All right, we saw number 80 there during these wide receiver drills. That's Mike Thomas, the free agent they signed from the L.A. Rams, where he had some exposure to Zach Taylor a couple of years ago. He has really stood out to me in the early stages of this training camp. He caught a deep ball today. He caught a slant in the red zone for a touchdown. With John Ross and T. Higgins out, he has typically been practicing with the ones at the wide receiver spot, and he's been very impressive. He has been impressive here. He's got a familiarity with the offense, having been with Zach before. Zach knew him. He knew Zach. It was a, a, you know, a match made in heaven. And you look at him, the thing that jumps out about him right away, jackhammer feet. I mean, he has got some foot quickness. He's got sweet feet. There's no question about it. And he runs precise routes because of those quick feet and gets separation, getting in and out of those cuts. He's been extremely impressive, and he's made plays. And not only at the receiver position, but when um, the, the rubber meets the road and they start playing regular season games, if he's on that roster, he's going to be on the coverage teams. He, he had a lot of tackles for the for the, uh, for the Rams, you know, covering punts and covering kickoffs. And he's a, he's a very accomplished special teams player. So Darren Simmons smiling ear, earlobe to earlobe as well. The offensive line drills take place on the far end of the field from our vantage point. So without binoculars or a telephoto lens, it's a little bit difficult to see. But I know you are paying close attention to the pass rushing drills that took place today. What stood out? 
Yeah, I thought the defense got the upper hand in the pass rush, one-on-one -on -one pass rush today. I thought the offensive line more than held their own yesterday. And that's the, that's the way it is. I've been through a bunch of them over 12 years of professional football. One day, you know, one group has a better day than the other group, and it's kind of back and forth. It's yin and yang. And it's what makes each other better. You know, you improve uh, going against each other. And, and a guy that I was very interested in watching was Jonah Williams because, you know, let's face it, Jonah, he was drafted 11th, the 11th pick in the draft. He was drafted to be the plug and play left tackle for a and decade. That's Jonah, right. that's Jonah right now, number seventy-three. Number seventy-three, and and, yeah. uh, and Jonah is he's he's getting tested. You know, he's he's pass protecting at that left tackle position. Carlos Dunlap comes at him, and then the very next snap, Carl Lawson. Now, you know, Carlos Dunlap is a multiple-time Pro Bowl player. Carl Lawson, we know, has speed on the edge, coming off the edge. That's a good challenge. And Jonah Williams needs that challenge. Jonah Williams, all he has his first two games is Joey Bosa and uh, Miles Garrett. Those guys get contract extensions. They're the two highest paid pass rushers in the league. Their team paid them to win one-on-one -on -one pass rush battles. Jonah Williams was drafted 11th in, the, in, the, in, in his draft year to block those kind of guys in one-on-one -on -one pass rush battles. So he's going to be getting ready to, uh, to handle that, that one in, in a matter of 100 hours, Dan. Saturday at 4 o'clock, a little bit thereafter, kickoff against the Chargers and Bosa. Then Thursday night at 8 o'clock, about 100 hours later, he's got Miles Garrett. Welcome to the NFL, my man. That's, that's two, two pretty good challenges to start your NFL career on the blind side of a rookie quarterback drafted with the first pick in this year's draft, number 11 pick in 2019, protecting the blind side of the first pick. Uh, 2018 and in the first or 19 and first pick in 2020 going to be very interesting. And we just saw the starting left guard, Michael Jordan, out of Ohio State, getting ready for his second NFL season. He was the guy that had his jersey rolled halfway up. You have high hopes and expectations for Michael Jordan this year. I do, Dan. You know, uh, when, when I think the the coming out. Uh, phase of, of, of Michael Jordan's rookie year was he was dinged up a little bit physically, and then the Bengals went to Pittsburgh, and man, Cameron Hayward is a man, and Cameron Hayward, two old former Ohio State Buckeyes going against each other, and it went better for Hayward, and Michael Jordan, I think, learned a lot, and right after that, you know, Coach Turner said, let's let's step back, let's get you healthy, what, you know, take, take uh, note of a lot of things, learn how to be a professional. Michael Jordan addressed it, take care of my body. Uh, every practice is 100,000% is, is effort. So I got to get better, got to get better. Learned how to become a pro. Second half of the season, Michael Jordan really started to, the graph started to go up. He is a behemoth, Dan, big body, long arms, and he can bend his knees. You know, he's going against Geno Atkins in one-on-one pass rush drills. That's like trying to block a fire hydrant that's mobile. You got to get <laughs> low. And no, nobody's going to challenge Michael Jordan more in an NFL game than Geno Atkins does in one-on-one -on -one pass rush drill. And we talked about it today, Dan. I can speak from experience. They can bull rush you. They can go inside, outside. There's nobody on either side of you. Those rush lanes are mammoth. It's, it's the hardest drill to do. They're better athletes. They're coming forward. You're retreating. You're trying to, you're trying to basically counter every one of their moves. One-on-one -on -one pass rush drill it, it's more of a true test when you're doing stunts with two people working together, guarding a tackle, working against defensive tackle, defensive end. When it's one-on-one, -on -one, that's tough sledding, man, tough sledding. We're seeing T. Higgins in the middle of the screen now, number 85. Again, he went through the wide receiver drills today, did not take part in the 7-on-7 seven seven or 11-on-11 11 11 stuff, but obviously he is progressing. We're hearing that John Ross could be back soon, so that would be welcomed if that's the case. If I had to pick a guy that I think has been the most impressive of anybody so far in this camp, I would say Tyler Boyd. He makes catch after catch. Seems like he's already developing great rhythm and timing with Joe Burrow. Do you have a guy, Lap, who's been most impressive to you so far? You know, I'd have to say uh, Joe Burrow because he has had ups and downs. It hasn't been – I mean, I thought, I thought the first few practices it was like, wow, this is almost too good to be true. Then all of a sudden, the first red zone was an, was an eye opener. It was like an aha moment. Wow. Red zone in the NFL, they're bigger, faster. The holes are smaller. They close faster. I have to throw with more anticipation, more accuracy. He had to ratchet it up. He had to focus, you know, like hone in 
fine tune it. And, and he did, like we said today, he came back and responded. So I, I think I think it's how he's handled adversity and it's not all going to be perfect. I think his leadership is is unquestioned. I think he's winning his locker room. I think he's winning his coaching staff. Um, he is he's just a like I said, there's no panic in this dude whatsoever. And let me tell you, as lineman in a huddle, that is if you look at your quarterback and his eyeballs look like two hard boiled eggs. That's a that's a comfy feeling, if you know, like after a turnover or something. But if you look at the quarterback and he's like, you know, and you know, life's good. Here's an example: uh, I played with uh, Brian Sight, and Brian Sight threw two pick six interceptions, and he threw another interception they took inside the ten yard line. He gave up basically twenty one points on turnovers. He comes in the huddle, and he goes, "Bet you guys are mad at me, aren't you? I'm cleaning it up. I bet you guys are mad at me, aren't you?" I got him just where I want him. They're overconfident. I made some mistakes. We're going to win this game. He throws five touchdown passes. We win the game 35-30. No panic, just poise. You know, I mean, everybody's going to have their downs. Everybody's going to have their ups. You just hope that the ups are more numerous than the downs. All right, that's going to do it for today's training camp report. The Bengals will scrimmage tomorrow morning. We will not have a live training camp report. But we will have detailed coverage of that scrimmage tomorrow when we drop a new edition of the Bengals Booth Podcast. For Dave Lapham, I'm Dan Horde, and thanks for checking out this training camp report on Bengals.com and the Bengals social media platforms.